Welcome back to the show, guys. Have you ever wondered what would happen if the news sites just had nothing to report on for the day because nothing happened? That's not a problem we have in the crypto markets, for sure. Even though today is what you could describe as slow mover, at least in the markets, there's so much intricacies behind everything. Let me show you what I mean. So, having a look at this, Bitcoin has tested the 4K support line on several occasions in the past few days, but it's remaining strong at above that. No likely spurred on by the fact that Bitcoin Cash has been steadily falling in value since its recent high of $1,000. And Ethereum has seen a recent price increase. Take a look at this clip where Ethereum eats the 320 cell wall on GDAX. such a geek to find that so entertaining. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not a financial advice, you're responsible for your own money. Now, there has been a lot of positive news coming out of Ethereum's camp lately, of which I've been reporting on stuff like the plasma scaling solution, for example. Yet the price for Ethereum has been floundering. It's not surprising, not straight off the back of Bitcoin's meteoric rise from 3 to 4k and beyond in such a short amount of time, as well as the recent uncertainty over which Bitcoin will be the Bitcoin with Bitcoin Cash. But now that the Bitcoin market is slowing down a little bit, I can see some of the lifeblood returning to the altcoins. I'm not saying, however, that Ethereum's 3,000% gain this year makes it still undervalued. That'll be up for you to decide. Now, IOTA is down a little bit from its recent $1 valuation, but it's not uncommon to see coins do this, where they rise very quickly over a short period of time the price corrects itself and you see it retrace a little bit. Case in point, Bitcoin's current price. And NEO seems to be on sale at $35 at the moment. Now here's an example of why the crypto markets are so interesting. When I was preparing this video, two coins caught my eye. That was Embers and Eternity because they were both up 500 and 600% respectively. That's changed within the space of an hour. Embers is down to 400% and Eternity hasn't seen much growth at all, 40% and falling from 600%. Now having a look at Eternity. Now, this chart looks very pump and dumpish. I'm not saying that the coin per se is a pump and dump, but the chart looks it. Now, if you'll have seen this video, well, you, you probably didn't, there was only around 80 views, not saying that you should go and watch it though. So the first thing I wanna go through, of course, market, market update. I wanna do these every day. But essentially what pump and dumpers do is there'll be a few of them, usually with a lot of Bitcoin, and they'll use their influence for their social media followers and get them to buy a coin on the day. Now here's the thing. They will have chosen what coin they want to pump a week, two in advance, and they will be slowly picking up the coin. You can see this. They'll try and do it as quietly as possible without attracting too much attention to it. Then they will announce to their social media followers to buy this coin, and then they will sell it to them. Now, I did look into Eternity. It just seems like another cryptocurrency. Those are some of the most ghetto exchanges. Embers, on the other hand, might be something interesting. So what's caused Ember's 400% gains this week? Well, I'm not too sure, but I had a look into the coin. It's a smart contract enabled platform, which is ding, 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 hits that buzzword that a lot of investors like. Primarily, it's designed to be a all-encompassing platform for content creators to get paid, share, and collaborate with other content creators. And onto the news, BitThumb, Korea's largest exchange, is planning to add Monero. If we have a look at this website, don't understand a word of this. Down here's what we want. August 23rd is the date they plan to list it. Now, this is a big deal because Korea has been behind some of the recent pumps for Bitcoin Cash and Dash. And as a lot of you have pointed out, it could be due to the political unrest over there, which could see citizens move en masse into crypto to protect their assets. Could this be a good move for them? Only time will tell. But let me tell you an interesting story. After the American invasion of Iraq, the local currency over there, the dinar, plummeted in value. 
Those with a financial background saw this as an opportunity and exchanged their dollars for dinar at a vastly reduced rate and just held on to it. Recently, the dinar has stabilized in value, netting those early investors huge sums of money. And in other news, the Philippines has granted two licenses to two cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, this is huge as getting an exchange in your country is one of the first steps. You allow people to buy, then the speculators come in, investors start buying it up, then comes shops and other services accepting it as a method of payment, then comes mass market adoption, which is what we're all here for. And lastly, Vibehub, a blockchain-based VR platform, made it onto CryptoCoin News front page. Now, I may talk about that one specifically in a future video, but what I wanted to talk about was how VR and blockchain could be investors' dream. Now, if you think about it, the VR headsets we've got currently are still kind of first generation. They're heavy and cumbersome. The resolution isn't very high. Just imagine when those problems are solved, when you can have VR glasses, when you can have VR contact lenses. This is why a lot of technical analysts are predicting mass market adoption in the not too distant future. People still love them as they are. Imagine when they're 10 times better. So while it might take a number of years, one of these projects is likely to rock it. Like these guys. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.